it was breathtaking, I have to say. It was so emotional and it was very hard to take in, but it happened and I think we dealt with it really well. My name is Julie Amflat. Sean Jones. My name is Nigel Willets, um, lottery winner and i a director and founder of Buzz Trampoline Parks in Cardiff and in Swansea. I think we just hugged each other and yeah. just jumped up and down and said, oh my God, you know, is this real? It's you definitely know? as we're in bed with a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we just kept calling each other, weren't it? And we just kept saying, you're a millionaire, you are. I was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> She's like, I know, but we're multi-millionaires. <laughs> I was like, I know. <laughs> He's been living the dream. He couldn't believe it when he checked his tickets. Just over a million pounds on Friday the 13th, 2014. Do you see it on TV all the time? I never think it's going to be you. The highlight is just um, being able to help the family, uh, having nice cars, which I love my cars, um, a nice home and holidays, all the usual things. Buzz Trampoline Park. It was an idea from my business partner um, from America. Uh, he went on holidays and saw it and thought he'd bring it back to the UK. Two months afterwards, um, that um, we sat down and um, set it all up, and where we've been four years later. This is part of the new house. This is what we bought from our oh, the first buy that we did. I um, bought two properties, one each for my daughters, set up my grandchildren for the rest of their days. It's, it's nice that I can set up my son for life, me and my husband, what we are set up for life as well. I was uh, brought up and born on uh, Lansbury Park in Caerphilly, um, quite a rough area really, uh, good people mind and um, yeah, so I'm from quite a humble background um, and still grounded, just because I've won the lottery doesn't mean I'm any better than anybody else. On the uh, Friday when I bought my ticket, I wasn't going to buy it, I wasn't going to go out um, and then my nephew who got four little kids, he um, he was struggling, didn't have any electric, and one thing and I said, could you lend me some money? And I went, okay. So I, when I went out, I thought, oh, I'll come by the lottery now. It was 10 past seven, and I thought, oh, it'd be a big queue, no, nothing. I went straight in, and I normally do 10 pounds, and I pulled a 20 pound note out of my pocket and thought, oh, I'll just do 20 pound. And I'd done that. I went up, give him some money for his electric and get a Chinese for him and the kids. And then that's how it all happened on Friday the 13th. We've been in the syndicating world. Okay? For about six years? Six years yeah, we've done, done it for. Yeah, we've done it for six years. And Louise only joined a year before, didn't she? Yeah. So yeah. she was only with us a year or so. Like she did join. <laughs> yeah, because it was over the year. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out with my friends and they do take the mickey out of me, you know what I mean? Because uh, it'll, it'll always come up and, you know, and, um, and they'll, you know, they'll say, oh, you won the lottery, did you, Nigel? We want to wear that, you know, and just having, just having a laugh. That year, when Louise decided she was getting married, remember she yeah. came and she asked us, she said she was thinking of pulling out. Yeah. Because she was finding it difficult to, you know, keep paying every yeah. week when Ed and we tried to encourage her. She yeah. got we did. Which I'm glad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she stayed. <laughs> A couple of hours before that, me and Rihanna had been talking, and obviously, you know, they were struggling, and they, and, yeah. you know, in rented housing, and they had two little ones, and I kept, she, she said to me, oh, mum, you know, Christmas is going to be tight this year, and I was like, well, you know, get away with it when you can now, and yeah. the kids were younger, and you can buy and just then, if you like, and, and we had only just been talking about that in the day, and, you know, they don't have to have everything, and, no. you know, and then Julia, and she just said, eh, can I come and see you? And I always remember, yeah. Oh, Christine, stop crying, Christine. 
my sister, um, she won, like for 12 months on the trot, she was winning about a dozen 800 pounds uh, on the hot picks each week. She won it 12, you know, 12 to 18 times, believe it or not. Uh, and then um, last year, um, she, uh, she won 20,000 pound as well. Yeah, quite a lucky family, really. It's been some good things and bad things. It's, it's quite a difficult thing to, um, to grasp, uh, but I would never change it for the world. It's been amazing. The advice I would give to any new winners. Take the time. Um, be careful of um, people trying to come into their lives, because that's what happens um, who are con men or women. Um, and just be cautious and kind of listen to the other winners who got all the experience and all the stories of uh, all the things that have gone wrong for them as well. It doesn't matter who you are, it will happen because um, that's how people are. And you, because you're on such a high, especially in the early days, um, I, you're just not aware of it. I think dealing with the whole situation yeah. was challenging in itself. It was just getting to grips with everything, yeah. wasn't it? Without you realising, People seem to kind of come into your life um, for, for, for reasons that you, you're not aware of. A gentleman on this morning when we was on yeah. there, and he was from a church, wasn't he? Yeah. And I remember coming home uh, from London, and about two days later there was a letter in there through the post, and he, was, he explained who he was, and he asked us for money and to help with the church. Yeah. And, and yes, we were Chris. We are Christians. We help the church in every way we yeah. possibly can, you know. In a, but you've got to draw a line somewhere. When you win this amount of money, they think that you're going to be a different person, and you know, your life does change. But I'm still the person that I've always been. You know, I couldn't be anything else. Looking at each other sometimes, and we just ask each other. Is this really us? Is this really happening? I still do the same things. Yeah. Still shop in Tesco, I still, <laughs> still want to go to the cinema, I still yeah, want yeah. to do the, you know, the things we did before. Yeah. It has changed, but I, I don't feel I've changed as a person, I don't care. We've gone out for meals and, um, and some have gone, no, you're not paying. You know what I mean? I'm going to pay for it. Because you, you kind of go out and you expect that you've got to pay for everything. And, it's, and then when you don't, I've sat there and it's like, you know, just me and the wife. And then there's 14 of us and then they're like, well, how much was your meal, how much was your? And they're all passing five pound not. And, and then you're like, oh, I bet they must be thinking, how tight is he? It is still a dream, because you've got to pinch yourself even, because it doesn't seem real, but it is. <laughs> I haven't changed, so people shouldn't change towards me either. I'm just a still person. It's a big bank account.